Hello everyone, welcome again. In this software testing tutorial, we are going to learn what is equivalence partitioning. Now equivalence partitioning is very important test design technique or black box test design technique, which is very widely used in software testing. If you are going for any software testing interview, you should know equivalence partitioning because this is also the very widely asked interview question. And if you know it with example, you will be definitely be able to explain it very easily to the interviewer. So I'll be covering equivalence partitioning with very simple examples so that you can easily correlate and explain it to the interviewer. Okay. So now if we talk about this word equivalence partition, so partition is dividing, so basically dividing into the different partitions and equivalence is something which is conceded as equal. Okay. Now let's take an example of understanding this equivalence partition. Say for example, you are testing a e-commerce website and there is a module of discounts, right? So in e-commerce website, most of you who are watching this particular video would have definitely bought something or the other from the online store and there are sales going on uh, most of the time and sales are, you know, divided into different categories. Say for example, you spend $100, you get 5%, you spend $101 and above up to $200, you get another percentage of discount, right? So for example, you are going to test that particular discount module in the software in the e-commerce portal. So how we can have these partitions, right? So let's first divide the partitions, okay? Now say for example, there is an e-commerce portal and that portal has three different tiers of discount, 5%, okay? 10% and 20%. So these are three different discounts that you have uh, available on a particular sale that is going on in the e-commerce portal. Now 5% discount is applicable for any customer who is making purchase of say for example $1 and up to $100. Okay then 10% discount is applicable to a person who is buying from $101 up to $200. Okay. Then 20% discount is applicable for a person who purchases from, uh, you know, $200 to $500. Okay. So 1 to 100, 101 to 200, 201 to 500, applicable discount is 20% and then um, anything above 500 say for example is 25% discount. Let's have one more partition there. Okay. So anything above 500 so which is 501 and up to the max value allowed on the portal. Right. So for example max value we'll see max value allowed uh, max purchase value allowed is say for example um, 5000 okay so up to 5000 the discount will be 25% and after 5000 there shouldn't be any purchase allowed okay so we'll we'll write these later and this one later so now if we talk about the equivalence partitioning if we see that we have divided these discount percentage on an e-commerce portal into different partitions right and when we talk about equivalence partitioning, the partitions of 5%, 10%, 20%, and 25% are considered equal. So if you pick any value in this partition, any purchase value from 1 to 100, it will be considered same and 5% discount will be applied. If you pick any other value from 101 to $200, 10% discount should be applied, right? Similarly, 20% 20 and 25%. So when we divide the, you know, module which accepts certain values and based on the values, certain outcome needs to be applied, then those sort of module or dividing those module in equivalence partitions is known as equivalence partitioning. Okay. So in this case, the discount module of the application accepts the dollar amount or the purchase amount 
and based on those dollar and purchase amount you get the different discounts okay so this is basically your input and this is the basic output that you want to verify right if i have this if i have the uh, you know items in card which are hundred dollars then i should be getting five percent discount if i have items in cart and i have completed the purchase of 101 dollar i should be getting 10 percent discount right so this is what partitioning is so we have divided the module into different partitions now these if we consider are the valid partition right so this is valid this is valid this is valid and this is valid now what happens for the purchase which is less than one dollar so for example 0.99 cent should this be allowed on the application right so if this shouldn't be allowed in the application or this purchase shouldn't be allowed then in that case what you do is this is invalid partition okay so this becomes in valid partition and here because the max purchase amount is 5000 so i shouldn't be allowed or as a customer a customer shouldn't be allowed to make a purchase of five thousand one dollar so that's another invalid partition okay so now you can see that the module of a discount once we have divided that module into logical valid and invalid partitions we are now having a clear understanding of when the partition or what values we need to provide or what values we need to test with to get different discounts right so this is very important to understand in order to get the best number of test cases or minimum number of test cases which will give you the best coverage okay so now we don't have to do the random testing in this particular case what we can do is we can test you know invalid partition at the lower end invalid partition at the higher end with some of the values in the invalid partition and you know higher end invalid partition then we can test with some of the values in the valid partitions right in each of the valid partition we can pick say for example here we'll pick fifty dollars hundred dollars here we'll pick couple of other values here we'll pick 201 you know 499 300 and here we'll pick say for example 501 and you know 4500 or 5000 so if we pick couple of values from each of these valid and invalid partition we are getting good coverage and we are testing each of these partitions of the discount module of e-commerce application right so this is what equivalence partitioning is you divide the module of the software which behaves you know equally or logically uh, equal in certain scenarios so you divide those into you know valid and invalid partitions and then within those partitions it doesn't matter what values you put within those partitions if they are within that range the output should still be considered similar and should be same so in this case it doesn't matter what values you know you put from 1 to 100 it should still be considered as 5 percent discount right so this is you know logical partition that we do in software testing to minimize the number of test cases that you are going to test against now you can't keep testing you know purchases from one to hundred dollars so there will be you no know, like hundred test cases all alone to test this five percent discount and we have understood in the software testing principle that exhaustive testing is not possible and that is why these are the techniques equivalence partition is the technique to come up with minimal number of test cases which will give you which will still give you a very broad test coverage because logically the software will consider all the values within these partition as same it will take them as same it doesn't matter you put all hundred values or you just just pick higher and lower and one or one or couple of middle values and test it now equivalence partitioning doesn't go alone it goes together with boundary value analysis which i'll cover in the next tutorial and when we when ep and bva both go hand in hand that brings a lot of strength 
to documenting your test case and you will be you know coming up with scenarios that will help you to get the best coverage okay so this is the discount example now let's take an example of the page which has the input box right this would this could be you know an example an interviewer might ask you say for example there is a web page and on the web page there is a text box which accepts the values from 1 to 100 okay and only whole numbers are accepted so if this is the example interviewer comes and asks you to get me the equivalence partition for this particular scenario okay so how you can get the equivalence partition in this case you can simply have this so this is the text box it accepts the value from 1 to 100 so you can say 1 to 100 okay this these are the values so anything between 1 to 100 are the values that should be accepted you should be able to submit so you can say this is a valid partition okay and then anything less than 100 okay so you can say 0.99 you can ask question that clarify that this text box accepts only whole numbers okay so in this particular case if it accepts only whole numbers so it shouldn't accept any decimal values right so anything less than 1 which is 0.99 should be considered as invalid partition okay and anything above 100 say for example 100.01 if it is a decimal value should be considered as invalid partition as well okay so in this particular case we have come up with three partitions so you'll be you know having a partition a valid partition which will accept the value between 1 to 100 including 101 and invalid partition anything above 100 anything less than 1 will be considered as invalid partition right so if this is something which is being asked this is how you can explain to the interviewer and can you know uh, definitely show that you know all these concepts because these concepts you will be applying day in day out in software testing so very important to understand and you can think of a lot other examples and if you want to get me you know answer any of the doubts that you have or examples that you have for equivalence partitioning please do comment and i'll you know answer those questions or create a you know another tutorial to answer those questions so that's all for this tutorial for equivalence partitioning in the next tutorial i'll cover boundary value analysis and explain how equivalence partitioning and boundary value analysis go hand in hand and provide a lot of value for test design technique or black box test design technique so hope this was helpful thank you very much for watching